What's up everybody, Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. Guys, uh, this last Saturday I had two examples of uh, P0171, P0174 lean codes that had the same uh, exact root cause. I mean, very, very similar root causes causing the issue. I believe the benefit to you watching this video be, be understanding like, hey, look, I look at the fuel trims, I knew I had a problem, but also how did I verify the problem was fixed? You'll see that in this video, so be sure to check that out. I think you'll like that. Also, if you haven't checked out my other video on fuel trims, I have a great video that explains fuel trims in the easiest to understand way that I could figure out how to explain it because I do teach this material uh, to students live in person and also online on a membership site as well. Be sure to check out the other video. The link is in the description. And here we go with this video with a P0171 and a P0174. What's up, everybody? We got ourselves a 2017 F450, I think. It's an E-Series. Yes, it is the E450. Uh, guys, we've got a check engine light on and a surge. If you look at this thing, kind of surging up and down. I'm hoping you guys can hear it uh, bouncing around. Uh, I took a look at the codes here. Let me show you. Our continuous memory DTCs. We're using a top down here this morning. Take a look here. We got a, ourselves a lean code. A trans range sensor frequency code, and I believe it was a starter relay code. I'm waiting for this to pop up. I think that's what the codes were. I have a report I emailed to myself, but uh, so we have a code uh, P0174, system lean bank 2, engine starter performance code. I'll have to look into that to learn more about that. And then a range, uh, trans range sensor signal problem. But you hear this thing bouncing around now. I got in here and I went right to the data stream. I'm going to show you what's up. Yeah, oh, it lost the stuff I had. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the stuff I want to see. I always like to see what the uh, battery voltage or vehicle uh, voltage is. Let's get the transmission range status. Um, let's see what else. I want to get my long-term fuel trim and my short-term fuel trim. So short-term. Bank one and two. Let's cruise up here. Uh, I want to get my long term bank one and bank two. And uh, I also want my mass airflow sensor. Let's take a look at that. Frequency, uh, status, hit OK. Let's take a look at what we got here, guys. Look at these fuel trims. Holy moly. Long term bank one and bank two, 28%. Short term bank one, bank two, 43%. Well, uh, you know, the way this thing is acting with this surge, I'm definitely thinking we got ourselves an air leak of some sort. I'm hoping you guys can see way back here. The snorkel is not on the engine all the way. It's kind of uh, misadjusted. So, this thing is supposed to stall out. Um, I don't like driving big box trucks and stuff if I don't have to. I mean, I'm not technically a... Uh, Fishing at the shop, right? But you can look down here at where the, uh, the smoke was on, and I think that's our problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that up. We're gonna see if our fuel trims get good. All right, guys, there you have it. Getting down in here, this is just flat out uh, loose, not even on there. So I have to loosen up the clamp and get it back on. This is a pretty interesting resonator or air deflector or whatever inside there. Something probably to make it so it don't make noise or redirect the airflow. Pretty cool stuff. But we're going to go ahead and get this back on and we'll check our fuel trims again. Alright guys, now for the moment of truth. We'll go fire this thing up, watch the scan data. Um, I'm not going to clear the fuel trims at first. I'm just going to go ahead and let things uh, go as they are. So I'm turning the key on. Uh, so I'm going to communicate. Retry, yes. So let's see if this will pick up. There we go. So we can just watch our short terms. Actually, I want to go back. Let me take off. Some of this data, I think that mass airflow sensor was right in the middle. Do, 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 do. Let's get these guys out of there. Not so concerned about that. Okay. So you got a short term and long term right there. Let's watch this as it starts up. And we're going to see if it's surging like it was. And we're also going to see if uh, our long term starts to come down. That's a beautiful thing about when you know you fix something. We can do one of two things. We could clear the fuel trims, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. But I just like watching these uh, short terms go negative. You see how negative they are? That means we fixed the problem. 
Now, I gotta look up that starter code and uh, fuel, uh, or no, starter code and trans range switch code. I'm gonna have the customer take this for a drive to make sure it's good, but I'm pretty confident that uh, probably as that motor was torquing, you know, as you accelerate, that uh, airflow is changing back and forth across the uh, mass airflow because of the, uh, what they call pirate air. So that probably was everything, because if you uh, take our long term and add it to our short term, so you got short term uh, 2, negative 20, long term 2, 28, so that give us about positive 8. Not bad. I am also going to take a look at our freeze frame data just to take a look and see uh, if it shows us any freeze frame data here. I didn't clear any codes out yet, so let's go to uh, read fault code. Uh, I don't know where they show my, my freeze frame data here, to be honest with you. 2017. A new one. No, not, enough, not so new, it's five years old already, huh? So we can see our freeze frame right here. So I'm not so worried about the lean code because I know uh, what, you know what the problem was there. Let's see the freeze frame for the starter. Oh, there you go. So um, sometimes they'll tell you how long ago it was. I'm not seeing that there, so let me go back this way. Let's take a look at our freeze frame for this uh, trans range signal. It looks like the engine was running. Um, they don't really give us much. Oh, let's see, closed loop. Transmission was in drive or overdrive at that point. So that's interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and clear these codes. I don't know if that may be another issue. But we definitely got something fixed here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off, turn the key back on, key on engine running, um, go back here and we're going to go and clear the DTCs, and after we clear them, I'm going to go back and do a key on engine running self-test. Clear DTCs. Okay, that's completed. I'm going to go back here and we're going to do a key on engine running. K-O-E-R is key on engine running self-test. So we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle up. And we'll hit OK. And it's going to have us rotate the steering wheel, hit the brake, shift the tow haul button or push, push the tow haul button. It should tell us to do that in just a second. <clears throat> I don't use the top down often, usually I'm using uh, Ford IDS, but uh, let me go ahead and rotate the wheel, maybe it's expecting that right now. Rotate the wheel, stomp on the brake, and we'll hit the tow haul button here. I don't know that it's normal for this to take this long to start the test. The engine RPM kicked up, but I don't see uh, the screen popping up telling me what to do. So. We'll see. Um, I, like I said, I don't use the top down often. It's a, it is a nice tool. I really like the uh, the feel of the tool. It's pretty rugged and stuff. Um, it has been a little glitchy here and there, but every time that I've called customer support and talked to them, they've had a fix within like a week. They go, oh, hey, download the latest. We fixed that. I'm like, okay. So pretty cool stuff. I'll get back with you guys after this is done. Okay, the only code that popped up on our on-demand, or should I say, key on engine running self-test was AC. Not right. Well, I had AC on, so that's my fault. Should have been off. I should have paid attention to that. So, guys, at this point, they're going to take it for a drive and see what's up. We got a Chevy with the check engine light on next. Hey, guys, this is a 2018 Chevy. I think this is a E40 or not E4500. 4500 this is what a uh, express 4500 and it's got a lean code and the mass air cylinder code it's in a p0101 uh p0171 and a p0174 if you take a look here let me see if i can make it so you guys can see this the sunshine is killing me here uh these are our fuel trims long-term bank one 24 percent long-term bank two was at 19 percent uh right now the key is off this is just a, a, a history of the data stream uh, but short terms were going up a little bit and down a little bit. 
Now I want to tell you if I unplugged the mass airflow sensor and ran this engine, the fuel trims, uh, net fuel trim that was a long term plus a short term come out right to zero. So I knew we were dealing with a um, air metering problem, you know, where we're getting air where we shouldn't. So I started smoking this thing, got my handy dandy smoke tester out here and smoke just started rolling out of this little resonator. Check this out. This thing, this thing had broken off and it rubbed on top of the alternator. The alternator pulley has popped a hole right in the bottom of it. Let me go ahead and take it off so I can show you. All right, I'm kind of being mean to this thing to twist it around, but check this out. The alternator busted a hole, or should I say rubbed a hole right through the bottom of that. So I'm hoping if I put some tape on there, I might be able to seal that up with some 100 mile an hour uh, tape. Well, actually, just a Chevy, so it only goes 60. But anyways, we'll try sealing that up and see if our fuel trims change. All right, so there's where the alternator uh, rubbed through on this thing. Really, really messed things up for this vehicle. So I'm going to find a way to plug this up somehow. Uh, ideally, I th I'm uh, believing this is going to come as part of this whole unit. That's going to be expensive. Nobody's going to want to pay for that. But uh, let me go ahead and see what I can do here. Get this sealed up, and we'll see if our fuel trims go back to normal. All right, guys, I can't say that this is my nicest work to date, but I got this kind of uh, zip tied, you know, stitch this thing together, a bunch of duct tape around the hole. And just so you know, I do have enough clearance. Uh, you can't see it, but, you know, there's probably at least an inch and a half of clearance between the alternator pulley and that uh, resonator box. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and take a look at what our fuel trims are doing. So <clears throat> one thing I got to tell you, this... Top down has been plugged in for a long time, been running for a while. I tell you what, the battery on this thing lasts forever and a day. I do like that. So I go back here and uh, we're in data stream. Let's turn the key on. And I'm going to go ahead and fire it up just like I did on the other Ford. I like to watch the fuel trims correct themselves. You know, you can watch the short term should start going negative. If, it, if the problem is rectified, then you're on your way to fixing it. So, uh, Take a second to go into closed loop here. There we go. Negative two, negative four, negative seven, negative three. So we're just gonna sit here and see what happens. Um, the air box is definitely leaking. There's no question about that. A big old hole in there. I'm hoping to see my fuel trims go negative here. We could have another issue with the vehicle. I don't know, but I gotta start with the simple stuff first. That's a fact. So you see uh, our long-term bank one and bank two is 22 and 19, and the short terms are only going negative four, no negative eight, negative six, negative nine. Sometimes it takes a while. If you look at and read some of the strategies, especially with the information that Ford publishes, it takes a while before you'll go into active um, fuel management or active. I wouldn't say active fuel management, but active control. And you can see as this thing's warming up, you can see it's pulling back more negative. So. Our long term is just dropped down and we're still at negative, negative. So if you take your long term and add it to your short term, negative 11 plus positive 11 or plus negative 7, we're real close to zero, guys. This is good. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the RPM up here and we're going to take a look at what's going on. You, you will find it takes a while to learn the different fuel cell blocks. Each one's kind of got its learned value. So as you run the engine through these different parameters, you'll see they, uh, they uh, will adjust. Let's go ahead and see if we have a special function to reset the fuel trims. Let's go ahead and reset them. Special functions, let's say reset. Fuel trim reset, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna see, let's see, it says engine is running, condition check. Let me go ahead and, okay, condition satisfied, so they want the engine to be off. And I'm gonna hit the reset button. And you can see all the fuel trims went to zero. Now if we go back into our data stream and read data stream, fuel trim data, we're going to go hop in there and uh, see what's up. Guys, it is hot in Cleveland. I don't know if you can tell, but I am sweating like a, whew, it is just uh, very humid out. So I'm kind of uh, trying to take you guys along for the show, but man, I tell you what, I'm hot. So let's go ahead and get back in here. We just want to take a look at our uh, long-term bank one, bank two. We'll get a look at our short-term bank one, bank two. 
and we'll hit OK. And you should see them at zero now. So they're at zero percent. So let's go ahead and start it. We're gonna run this thing. And you'll see them see the short term start dancing around. Long term will be slow to follow. Make sure you check out my other field trim video if you have more questions about field trim. So yeah, bouncing around a little bit, you know, plus six, plus seven, plus four. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the RPM. I think we're okay. This thing just had some exhaust manifolds put on it too, but uh, we're looking all right, guys. Um, I'm gonna have the customer take this one for a drive as well. Make sure all is good. Guys, if you wanna learn more about fuel trims and uh, other diagnostic strategies, procedures, be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. I got a lot of good information out there. And we got the membership site for core and premium members. Uh, we got the next uh, uh, PicoScope giveaway, the PicoScope 2205A, I think is going to be uh, at the end of July. We're going to be giving away one of those. So you guys have a great day. If you like this content, hit the like button, thumbs up, all that good stuff, notification bell. I can't talk. I'm hot and I'm, I need some water. You guys take it easy. Bye-bye.